In this short tutorial, we're going to show you how you can create toolpath groups to better organize your parts for machining. So let's just go to File, Close. So we're going to start by opening an existing file to help us demonstrate the usefulness of toolpath groups. So let's go to open an existing file and from our project folder, we're going to open samplecabinettoolpaths.crv. Click on that and then press open. So here we have a pre-created file and I can see judging by the 2D view that we already have toolpaths in this file. So let's switch over to the toolpaths tab. So here we can see that we have a long list of toolpaths, which could do with organizing. Now the most common way to organize your toolpaths is by the tools themselves. And an easy way to select all of the tools that use the same tool is to simply right click on one of the toolpaths and then use this option show and then show all with this tool. If we click on that, then the software will only make visible the toolpaths that use the same tool as this toolpath that we originally had highlighted here. So now I can see we've got three toolpaths here that use the quarter inch drill bit. And so to organize these three toolpaths into a group, it's really easy. All I have to do is right click and then use this option here, group visible. And when I click on that, it will create this group and we can see what's in that group is the three toolpaths here. If I wanted to, I could take group one, right click, and then use the option to rename it, where I could give that a name relevant to what the group represents. For example, I could say, this is the drill bit group. And I will know that when I come to create my toolpaths, that all of the drill bit, the quarter inch drill bits are within this group here. So let's see what other tools we've got. Let's just look at this. If I hover over the profile bottom blind dado, I can see that here we are using a 3 8 inch end mill. So let's just right click on that and say, show all with this tool. Okay, so you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six toolpaths that use this same end mill. So again, I can right click and then use the option to group visible. And then I can right click on the group and I can rename that group and I can call that one 3 8 end mill, like so, and I click to accept that. To alter the name of, of this group, I can simply right click and then just use rename and that we can change that again if we wanted to. Say we wanted to shorten that down to EM, we can do that and it will just accept those changes. Another way for us to create a toolpath group is by simply right clicking anywhere within this space and using the option here to create an empty group. If we click on that, you'll see that we've created a group here at the top. Uh, there's nothing in there because we haven't added any tools into that group yet. And again, I can select it, I can right click and I can say rename this group. And um, we're just going to call this one example purely for example purposes. To add a tool into that group, let's say we wanted to put this profile cut toolpath into the example group, I can simply take that and then I can just drag that in place and you can see that that's been added in there. You can also highlight a group and then go ahead and create a toolpath. For example, let's just take this vector and we'll just create a toolpath here and it will automatically add it to the group that was highlighted originally. So let's just go ahead and we'll just go ahead and delete that toolpath. To delete a group, simply right click on the name of the group and then use the option to delete this. You'll be prompted with a message asking if you'd like to delete the sub toolpaths or keep them. So the sub toolpaths are the toolpaths that are currently in that group. In this case, we want to keep uh, this profile cut toolpath. So we're going to use the keep option. If you didn't want, if you didn't mind deleting that, then you can just press delete. In this case, we're going to say keep, we want to keep that. And I'm just gonna move this down our list just to put that back to the bottom to retain our machine in order. 
So now that all of my toolpaths are organized into groups, we can now go ahead and preview those toolpaths. It's just gonna undraw the visibility of uh, the toolpaths in the list here. And we're gonna go over to the preview toolpath option. To preview a group, I simply just click on the name of the group. You can see that just by clicking on the name, it doesn't make those toolpaths visible, but it's just quicker for me to just select that name and then go ahead and use the option to preview the toolpath. And that will preview all of the toolpaths within this group. So to do that again, so we're just going to click on the name of the group and then say preview selected toolpaths and it will preview all of the toolpaths in order that they are listed within that group. And then we can just select the last toolpath that isn't in a group and then use the option to preview that toolpath as well. So here we have all of our toolpaths previewed, happy with that, and then we can move on to the next stage. So let's just close out of the preview toolpaths form. It's also worth noting here for Aspire users, VCarve Pro users and Cut2D Pro users, you're able to actually save out groups as part of a toolpath template that you can then re-import uh, into further jobs and it will retain your group information. So now we're at a stage where we're able to save out our toolpaths and we can actually save out our toolpaths by the groups themselves. So let's take a look. We'll head over to Save Toolpath. We're going to use this option here, Selected Toolpath. You'll see that within our toolpath form list, it's telling us the toolpath to be saved. It's the profile cut. And if we take a look in our toolpath tree, we can see that that's because this is the toolpath that is currently highlighted. To save out a group, simply click on the group here to highlight it. And then you'll see that the uh, form has actually been updated and we now have the three drill toolpaths in here that are listed within our group. Select an appropriate post processor and then use the option to save the toolpath where by default it will just take the group name uh, as the actual toolpath name. And then you can save that out and it will have all three toolpaths there for you. Again, we can select this one here. So by clicking on the 3 8 endmail group, you'll see now that the toolpaths to be saved list has been updated to include all of those toolpaths that are within that group. And again, we can just simply press save toolpath and then it will give us the name 3 8 endmail followed by the actual post processor. And then everything will be saved there to one file. So that completes this short guide on how to use toolpath groups. Thank you for watching.